also the Palestinian authorities have prohibited to talk about. Because, of course, nobody wants people to know that in the birthplace of Jesus Christ, Muslims are setting churches on fire. So, I mean, this is the situation today in the world, and we are in front of these graceful acts, uh, thanks to this mondialist, this globalist promoted by the Pope, of course, and Obama and all the others. It really is ridiculous because some of the walls, we looked it up in the Vatican, are over 200 feet tall. Their main wall is about, what, 50 feet on average. It's got private mercenaries from Switzerland guarding it for 300 years. It's tax exempt. It owns 177 million acres. They admit they have a lot of hidden wealth. You're an expert on this. You've written books on the subject. What is the real wealth of the Vatican? How is it controlled? Because I looked into it. They basically give nothing to the poor. It is the biggest front ever, uh, but he's lecturing American and European middle classes that we need to open our doors up as European pensioners are being thrown out of their government's subsidized homes that they pay for, but they don't own. They're being thrown out to make way for the illegal alien invaders dubbed the precious darling migrants. Well, of course, uh, the, the money that the Vatican has is uh, a lot, also the gold they have. They have especially gold, a lot of gold, and they have a lot of property around the world. Imagine all the, the state the Vatican owns is infinite. So they are extremely rich, and the gold was actually removed from the Vatican Bank the moment, the moment they had to pass from Ratzinger to Pope Francis, because uh, now that they have to clarify certain positions with the worldwide authorities that uh, were actually took, taking away the SWIFT, you know, the SWIFT system, which is this worldwide banking system, was actually taken away from the Vatican when Pope Ratzinger resigned and was only, I mean, was basically given to back to the Vatican only with the Pope Francis arrived, they could finally have the SWIFT system back into the Vatican Bank. It was a kind of like blackmail from the banking authorities. And in the meantime, the, the, the gold got actually removed. So let's be clear, that was in the news, but buried in the paper. Internationally, the Vatican had its banking power threatened. And so it literally was coup d'etat uh, by the banking and the pedophile Pincer attack to turn it over to Ratzinger. I'm um, to turn it over from Ratzinger when he ran off to Gandalf Castle. I'm serious, folks. It's called Gandalf Castle. Uh, and then they brought in uh, Francis. Yeah, and the gold got sent to Frankfurt, to the JP Morgan in Frankfurt. So now, basically, there is not uh, really any gold in the Vatican Bank because it's been moved all abroad. So the, the Italian authority or the investigative authorities who need to clear these matters don't have access to Well, that to says it. it right there. I mean, the Vatican has been conquered. Absolutely. The Vatican is now taken over by these uh, Jesuits who next year, in October, will have their uh, general, uh, um, basically this general gathering from uh, Jesuits coming all over the world that will nominate a new uh, Jesuit general. So now at the moment we have Adolf Nicolas. He is basically the superior general of the Jesuits. We together with Pope Francis deal with the whole Catholic Church. And next year, in October, uh, Adolf Nicholas will step down. Uh, this is an un another unprecedented move in history because uh, the general of the Jesuits was like the Pope. He never stepped down, but this is already the second one that steps down, and we will have a new one coming up. So there is a lot going on, and uh, next year we will have uh, a new uh, uh, level of, uh, let's say, Pope Francis control of the whole thing. So let's see who is going to place as the Jesuit general. In any case, uh, um, as I was saying earlier, crosses are being destroyed. The value of the cross is being destroyed. It's not only the fact that he criticizes Jesus for having gone on the cross. He actually called the cross a vessel, simply a symbol. And not By so the way, important. this is so important. People say, oh, he means he failed physically, but spiritually won. He didn't say that. He stopped. We have the transcript. He moved away. We'll play it again after the break and then go to phone calls. But in Satanism, they desecrate the cross. They say it failed. They say Christ failed. They say he's weak. They say he's torn to pieces. That's actually, I don't want to get into it on air, but I've studied it. That is deep black magic Satanism. I mean, does the Pope know what he was saying when he says Christ failed? I mean, that is a satanic statement. 
It is a satanic statement that goes with this uh, implementation of a one world religion, because you can't have the cross uh, in this one world religion as the uh, supreme uh, symbol. It has to be basically, he has to put down the cross to put it on the level of all the other symbols. So in the name of ecumenism, it all comes together. In the meantime, ISIS, without the mercenaries of uh, America, Israel, and the Emirates, and the whole New World Order, are destroying systematically the crosses on every church in Iraq, and they are prohibiting Christians from practicing their faith. And now the ACLU is having them pulled off hilltops. Churches are having to pull nativity scenes. You can see the total satanic attack on Christianity. Yeah, it's, it's, it's unheard of. It's, I mean, it's in front of our eyes and nobody seems to really realize this. Then we had the openly gay Mo Rocca opening uh, the scriptures at the Papal Mass at Madison Square. I mean, it's a little bit uh, like embracing the lobby gay this way. We didn't uh, really expect this to happen during the Pope visit, but it happened. So, uh, of course, the Pope is never going to discuss uh, this whole gender issue in the proper way. But as people are, they're going to signal that. So all the old ways are being overturned, a radical transformation in coordination with Obama. World government, stay with us. We are back live, ladies and gentlemen, broadcasting worldwide. I'm your host, Alex Jones. Leo Zagami is our guest. I have never seen a religious institution more out in the open promoting world government, while our own globalist government, our own Anglo-American power axis out of Europe and the U.S., is funding radical Islam and running ISIS and Al-Qaeda and top generals come out, a whole bunch of them. The former head of defense intelligence just resigned two months ago and says, yeah, we're funding ISIS and Al-Qaeda and we told them and the White House knows and this is their directive plan and this is just horrible. We're made to fix intelligence to cover it up. You can really see it because I thought they'd bring in world government with a clash between Islam and Christendom instead they're going to bring in political correctness and make Christendom submit to Islam. That's why I said I was never really an Islam basher. I saw them being set up for the clash of civilizations. I saw them as victims in Iraq and other areas, which I'm still against. But that was the setup to empower the radicals, to build them up, to weaken Iraq, to then take over the whole region. Just like Libya, just like overthrowing our allies in Egypt. I mean, this is diabolical. I want to go to phone calls for Will, Nick, Dan, and others, the toll-free number to talk to Leo Zagami today is 800-259-9231. Leo Zagami, when I talk about diabolical, they're saying ban the name mother and father. They're, they're, I mean, it's just total tyranny. How far will... You've been in the secret societies. You've been a high-level Mason. You've been involved with the Vatican. That's why you turned against it, I guess, a decade ago when you saw it was evil. You've published 12 books on the subject. At the heart of it, what is it? Because I've been to Bohemian Grove. I've covered Skull and Bones. At the, at the bottom of the rabbit hole, I found these people are Luciferians. They believe Lucifer's God. Satanists work for them that are into partying and evil and hurting folks. But at the top, aren't they really Luciferians? Or what have you found? Yes, the New Age cults are all fundamentally uh, Luciferian. This uh, rainbow symbol that we all, you know, see these days that was born uh, officially in San Francisco is actually the rainbow towards Lucifer, and it has a lot of occult symbolism itself. Uh, so basically, Luciferian, the, 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 these, uh, these cults uh, are a myriad of various uh, uh, secret societies that I commonly refer to as, of course, the Illuminati network. And uh, uh, this is probably the easiest way to call them. But they are all part of this uh, destroying the Christian values, destroying the values of uh, Christianity to then be able to promote uh, everything that they're doing these days, uh, which is, of course, uh, unheard of 100 years ago. I mean, if a pope uh, like this will come to America 100 years ago, I think they will throw stones at him or maybe they will shoot him because, I mean, it would be just uh, uh, too much, uh, you know, for, for the real Christians to see that. But people have been made gradually to believe that this pope is some kind of supernatural being that everything he says is good in reality it comes from a philosophy that has been preparing itself for the takeover for at least 500 years 
Well, I got to so, tell you, I saw some of your speeches. I even read one of your books about five, six years ago, and I thought, there's no way the Vatican has this much power. There's no way the elite want to put it all in one organization. But they're basically, it already had a lot of power. They transferred a lot of power to it as an organization so they could hide it. And then now they've fully overthrown even that organization. And it's pretty much a dictatorship of whoever controls Pope Francis. We're going to go to break. We have a phone system problem today. Only three of our phone lines are working. Will, Nick, and Dan will get to you and then others can call in. Uh, Nick's listening on WAAM 1600 uh, in Tennessee. Will is uh, listening via Infowars.com uh, and more. Dan, stay there. We'll be back in 70 seconds with the third hour. Leo Zagama will be with us for 20 minutes to take your call. I had Jakari Jackson on yesterday from Philadelphia, and he said, you know, have you heard? The Pope said that Christ failed at the cross. And I believe Jakari. He never... Guy's so Christian, so professional, so nice. It, it's, it's like Clark Kent or something, a black Clark Kent. And I said, the Pope said that Christ fell on the cross. Really, Jakari, during a break, he goes, yeah, he did. He can find the clip. And we went and found it. But I still just can't believe it because it, it, it's just so ridiculously the attack on Christendom itself. I mean, if I had to think of one thing someone who's anti-Christian would do, it would be attack Christ on the cross. And I, I got to tell you, a few things scare me, but a man as powerful as the Pope with a billion plus followers, to actually see it, it it's so devilish, it actually shakes me to my core. I want to go to Will, Nick, Dan, Jim, and Sherry in that order. Uh, and I don't like to admit things shake me, but I'm actually shaken by this Pope, uh, Mr. Zagami. It is uh, really apocalyptic, the scenario we are living. And in fact, it's very symbolical, actually, that Obama, maybe the only true thing he, he said today at the United Nations was that ISIS is a apocalyptic cult because uh, these uh, groups are made to create the more chaos possible, to uh, foment evil, destruction, so something will come out of it because they are trying by doing this to hush up the Antichrist and the coming uh, back of Jesus. This is at least uh, what uh, it seems uh, from, uh, fr from what they're doing and also from what a lot of researchers have been saying. Today and in the last few days we had this uh, particular conjunction of planets. Uh, a lot of people have been talking about it, the blood moon, the red moon, a lot of people have said, the, what is, why is the occult elite doing all this uh, with this particular con conjunction? Well, the elite follows always astronomy. We were talking the other time with you, Alex, uh, about uh, the Jesuits and astronomy. They are not looking to astronomy, the Jesuits in their observatories, to see some alien creature arriving with his, uh, uh, you know, machine, uh, whatever. Uh, they are actually um, identifying the planets, the stars, so they know when the right conjunctions are in place, they can hush up things in a certain way. This is what they really do. With astronomy. I want to talk more about that after calls because, exactly, I don't believe in it. You don't believe in it. They do. That's why it's important. Uh, let's go to Will in Rhode Island. You're on there with Leo Zagami. Go ahead. Yeah, my question is for both of you gentlemen. I was just curious, at what point do you think that uh, the Vatican and Christianity became corrupted? Was it during the Middle Ages, Constantine? Or do you guys think that Christianity with some of the contradictions in the New Testament and the fact that the Gospels were written maybe hundreds of years after is just a concoction to kind of mislead us like the government. Well, Christ existed. The Romans and Jewish historians wrote about him. There's different perspectives in the three Gospels inspired by God. Uh, and Christ said there's going to be a lot of people trying to deceive you, so, you know, go with your spirit and, 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 you know, work through that. But I think whether it's the Orthodox Church or the Catholic Church, there's been good, there's been bad because we're humans. It's been a manifestation, and it's a larger part of God's plan. And I don't think we can fully understand it. Leo? Well, the Vatican has had problems since the beginning. In fact, uh, uh, it was actually St. Benedict who walked away from Rome, escaped here in the mountains uh, where I'm transmitting from, so he could found uh, mod uh, what became monasticism uh, because he founded his first monastery to escape the corruption in Rome. And this was uh, basically a long time ago. I mean, we're talking about 400... Uh, well, sure, look where they built the Vatican. Explain that to people. When we, uh, I mean, it's built on a serious serious cultic site. 
Sure, they, what they did basically, they just picked up the religion that preceded Christianity and they absorbed them in one great cult. That's why they're so powerful. But at the same time, um, the people who put together this whole machine that became known